Okay. All right, here we go. So I, I want to talk today a little more about hashes, just for fun, to give you a, a uh, practical example of how we would use this information. All right. Um, has anybody ever been to a website that had a pull-down menu to select the state that you're in? Right. So how do you think they, they built that? Well, a lot of them go find it on another website and they copy and paste their HTML and put it in here. But we can do this programmatically. If I have all of this information in a, in a hash, this is like a database. And I can use that to create strings, right? I can print stuff out and create HTML on the fly. So let's do that. We're going to create a select box of states. All right, so what does the select box look like? It's got a select, right? It's got a name. You guys have all had CSS and HTML, right? Or are currently enrolled. So my name is something like a state. And then I have some stuff like inside of my select, what do I have? You guys need to know this stuff cold, man. Uh, no, no, no. Just an HTML. This is straight HTML. No. It's option. <laughs> Value equals uh, whatever I'm going to pass to the back end that's going to receive this form. And that might be like uh, the abbreviation. Maybe that'd be the easier thing to pass. And then what's between my option values is the entire state that they <laughs> see. That's what they see in the pull down. And then I close my option tag. And I might have a couple of these, right? Uh, this might be, uh, right? Exactly, right? So what does that imply? And then I need to cl close my select box. So that's what I'm going to create in HTML. Uh, by using my hash and some print statements. All right, so what part of this is repeating? The All the option, right? And it's getting new value from uh, each record that I have in my hash. So that implies that I could do something like this. Puts select name equals state close bracket, puts uh, option value equals. Now, how do I get the value out of an array? Well, let's, let's skip that for a second. Let's, let's put the end. Remember how we did the box, the box of asterisks? You guys loved that one. So let's close our select box. We need that. And then we need a loop here to loop through and create all of these option tags. Yeah, I need to do that first. But let's, let's wor work through our loop. So how do I loop through a hash? Each. So I take my states.each, do, and I get a, uh, what is the first value? Is the actual state name. So I'm going to have state as my variable and my abbrev is the key is the value so this is the key this is the value so how would i put that into my uh, string okay so this is going to be abbrev i have to put it in my interpolation close it with some quotes then i'm going to put in the value of the state, the value they see, and this is going to be state. And we close our option tag and close our string. All right? Does that make sense so far? All right, and then I close my end to match my do block here. So this, these lines of code should generate. Uh, Val, um, valid HTML that I could just display in a browser. So let's see if it works. So there we go. Look at that. So I've got all of these values 
and the Alabama here. Value is AL. That's what's going to be shipped to the backend server. And this is what the people see. So let's take this code and see if it's actually valid. So I'm going to copy it. I'm going to create a, a new document. Let's see. Notepad, note, pad plus plus. So I, I just put it into my notepad plus plus here. And I'll save it as, I'll save it to my desktop. We'll call it um, states.html. And now we go find it. Ah, this is full screen. Did it save it? Where is it? No, I know. Um, where's the file that it saved? What the heck? Holy cow. That looked like it. Sorry, thank you. So I can double click this guy. It opens it up. And it works fine. Look at that, Alabama all the way down through Wisconsin. Isn't that cool? It doesn't need HTML tags. It doesn't need a doc type because browsers are very lenient on what they actually display. They'll take whatever you give it and try to display as much as possible. So obviously, this wouldn't be a valid page, but my select box at least is OK. So let's look at the source. This is. This is what I'm getting, all of these option tags. That's just the standard HTML. Isn't that great? Now, I'm a stickler in my HTML as well for formatting. So if you were in my CSS class, I would make you push, or HTML, I'd make you tab all of these option tags over by one, because the select tag is a container of a bunch of other things. And so they should all be indented. All right? So how do I do that in my Ruby program? Very good. So I just add a, I can put a slash T in here. That's a tab. I'll rerun it again. And now it's all indented. Isn't that great? Isn't that wonderful? So I've, I've taken my hash array and I was able to create some dynamic HTML from this, this hash rate that I have in memory. And this is how, not exactly how Rails does it, but it's very similar. We take data from our database, and we loop, loop through it, and we display blocks of HTML from that database. So it's very similar to that. Isn't that cool? All right. Uh, has anybody ever seen one more? We won't. Let's see. How might I make a list of all of these states as uh, links instead? I'm going to put them in A tags instead, right? So I can loop through the same way. So let's just do that. I'm going to loop through and get the values. And I'm going to have an A tag. My href, uh, see, th th my data doesn't quite match this yet. But uh, and I close my A tag. The, uh, the link is not going to be right. But this will print a bunch of A tags. Right, see how I've got my A tags? The the link is gonna go to slash UT, but that, that also will display correctly. Well, I'll just take it all. We don't need that. <laughs> Save it. Reload my page. And now I've got a bunch of links that go somewhere to AL. I mean, they don't go anywhere nice, but see how I was able to create links 
all dynamically. How about if I wanted them to go down the page instead of across like this? What would I have to add? A break tag, right? I'd have to add because even though they look like they're on their own lines here, HTML ignores white space, right? It doesn't care about that, and it squishes it all together. So I need to actually physically put a break tag in there. So where would I put that in my loop here? All right, so I can just add a break tag here, br slash, run it again. And now I've got break tags. We'll take all this again. Save it, reload it. Look at that. Is that cool? So that gives you just a, a taste of using these methods in a real practical sense since uh, the focus of our degree here is web development. We want to develop web pages. And now Ruby is designed to teach you to program so that we can get to uh, creating these websites dynamically with databases and all kinds of fun stuff there. Isn't that fun? I'm not feeling the love here at all. Uh, has anybody ever seen, we'll do one more, um, where you have a uh, nav bar that looks like this? All right, so this, 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 you don't see this very often anymore, but how would I make this structure and dynamically create the code like I did here? We're not going to use our states array at all, or states hash. How would I dynamically create a, a piece of HTML that looks like that where each of these is a link to somewhere? How do you think we might do that? I can put those in an array and loop through the array, right? Very good. What else? What else do you think we could do? If I had links to them, the structure would be really nice if I had an A and it points to a link here. Then I could do that, right? That would be really cool. But I don't have those. So hashes are used a lot in that sense. But uh, forgetting hashes, there's a, anybody think of any other way I could do this? I could hard code it, sure, absolutely. That's a valid, albeit uh, time-consuming way. All right, I'll show you some fun stuff. Um, if I have a letter like this, I can call a method called suck, which is short for successor. So what do you think the successor of A is? All right, so I get a B. What do you think the successor of B is? C, right? So I could actually use this structure in a loop to print out every one just using letting the computer calculate out what the next letter is. So I could do something like this. Um, I need a variable to start with. I'm going to say while my letter is not equal to, well, we need to find out what is the successor of Z. It's a weird one. It's, oh, sorry, Z. The successor of Z is a double A. So while I'm not equal to a double A, I want to do some stuff. Yep, I did. So while I'm not equal to a double A, I can do a while loop and increase my letter. How would I make my letter now point to the next letter? All right, very good. So I can uh, increase my letter. That's my counter. 
then I could just uh, puts out my code that would be something like an a tag href equals slash a um, the letter that I want to print. Uh, close my a tag. Put a break. No, let's not put a break tag. Let's put a space. And my letter will be letter dot suck. It will continue until it gets to this point, and then it will break. Let's see what it does. So look at that. Isn't that cool? Printed all of these guys. And uh, if I put that into some HTML. page save it reload it now I've got my little menu at the top where each of these goes to a different letter isn't that cool now they're all going to A so that's not right so this this should be uh, a letter right this should be my letter All right, any questions on that? Well, what do you mean? That's what I did. You mean a, a, a real URL here? Oh, yeah. Yeah, you could do that. You make this a named anchor, is that what you mean? No. <laughs> <laughs> yes, I can. Yes, that's what you're meaning. Yeah, that's so that's I can just add a pound. Yes. Okay. So that's, that's called a, a named anchor. Actually, you wouldn't have a slash there. So, yep, you can do that. Absolutely. Isn't that sweet? So, just some neat ways to uh, utilize all the stuff you've used. Now there's a, a shorter way to do this, the letter equals letter dot suck. I can call the dangerous method of successor, which replaces the letter, the value, the object that called it, with the, its successor. So letter becomes letter's successor, or letter successor becomes the letter is what's going on here. So it wipes out what was there before, and that should run the same way. Uh, uh, anything with an exclamation point, I call them dangerous methods because it modifies the object before the period here. It changes that value. If I just call this, it just changes, it makes the next letter, but it doesn't do anything with it. It doesn't put it back in place. It's like a plus equals in this case. So a dangerous meaning that it changes the value. All right, any questions on that? No. Isn't that great? You have to write all those tables. See, when you get to PHP and, and uh, Rails and even ASP, you don't have to write the tables by hand, but you have to write pieces of it. And then you're, you're inserting these pieces into loops and looping through and creating tables automatically. And yeah, you just drag a website on the page and you're done. I know that. Pass the kick cream button. <laughs>